Thanks to KiwiCo for supporting PBS. I did fail a math exam, my very first math exam. I think I got like a 10% or something like well, that. I, I mentioned before we filmed, I got a minus five on a math exam once. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Diana, you're watching Physics Girl, and I'm here today with Toby from the channel Hello. Tibbies, one of the other physics channels on the interwebs. Toby does this really cool thing on her channel where she <laughs> unboxes physics exams. The concept, you know, you might have seen it with tech and new iPhones and stuff, you know, very exciting, capture people's reactions. I do that, but with exams. We're going to look today at some exams from MIT, which is where I went for college, specifically 8012, which was <laughs> my first my first physics class at MIT it was mechanics, but we lovingly called it mechanics for masochists because it was very, very hard. We'll have to it have a look and did. see like what the problems are like and mm -hmm. why it would get that reputation for itself. We're going to talk a little bit about exam tips and tricks at some point for you physics students out there. All right, let's get to it. You're going to have to teach me how to do this. I don't, I don't yeah, unbox. so let's do an unboxing. Yeah. So in your sleep deprived state, you open it and you look at this. So this is the first problem. And it looks like we're starting off with some multiple choice and short answer questions. So like the first one here, two planets are orbiting a star, at two different radii, and then they're asking which has the greater orbital velocity and which has the greater angular momentum. So you'd need to know how the orbital speed depends on the distance away from the star. You're not just asked for the formula or to plug numbers in, yeah. they're actually asking you how are, are these things related, so maybe yeah. that's why it's a harder course. Yeah, which is something I really liked about this course, is that it was conceptual. Like you didn't just plug in equations, you had to know the physics concepts, and I think that's yeah. partially why conceptual physics is my favorite way of thinking about physics. The math is fun, <laughs> don't get me wrong. That's why I'm wearing it all over my that jacket. Cool. Next one. I feel like you should have done the page <laughs> oh, turn. Oh no no, you need to learn. Okay. You need to learn the technique. <laughs> On to problem number two, the Atwood machine. These usually take a, a while to work through and they're not that conceptually hard. It's just usually a bit of algebra determining like in part B the acceleration of the lighter block. So mm -hmm. knowing how forces are related to acceleration, I guess e F equals MA. Uh, if you know that much, you'll probably do okay in the question. Mm -hmm. It's a bit intense looking. It is intense looking and they also, a lot of times they'll have no friction in problems like these, but this one, they've got a coefficient of friction. Let's keep <laughs> going. Ooh, a rocket. <gasps> Ooh, this one looks fun. Rocket in an interstellar cloud. I'm gonna guess that this problem is something like you've got this density of particles over here and you've got a velocity so it's how much the rocket slows down or how much it has to continue boosting itself in order to overcome the momentum lost from hitting a bunch of particles. So the fact that you're they're breaking down the rocket into two different masses, mm -hmm. um, so I guess rocket science. Yeah. Um, and, and the basics of rocket science here. This is when math comes into physics. It's like you're losing fuel, but we're gonna we're gonna reflect that in terms of a change in mass of yeah. the rocket, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And I think the rocket equation and, and stuff like this is actually really cool physics. My my one tip for going into any physics exam is just F equals M A. Like here they give it to you in the in the question, which is great, but kind of when in doubt, try to like smush something into F equals M A and you'll probably come out with yep. something. The problem here is that M is changing. So moving on. <laughs> moving on, we've got something called sticky disks and um, this looks like a momentum conservation thing. I guess we could actually read the question, but um, <laughs> that's just my initial thoughts. And so I, if I had turned over the page and seen that, I would have been ready in my brain with like, momentum is MV and momentum is conserved in a system like this. You know what we haven't done so far, which I would often do in exam, is yeah. to look just through all the questions. Yeah. We could we could just flick through. Yeah, like, let's the rest do it. Of oh my goodness, this is a very long question. Yeah, obviously, something about rotation. Like this has yes. got to be rolling it somehow. Next would be bead on a spinning rod. Man, there's a lot of rotation, but there's also motion. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of a lot of cases of things rolling, moving, rotating, yeah. and sliding. Central potential. Okay, so we've got a little bit of potential energy question. Looks like particle. So oh, and then they give you some equations. <gasps> Probably That's not good so to see at the nice. end of the exam. Good to see these before oh, you start. Oh, <laughs> these are nice. You can see how these would be useful. These are like a moment of inertia of different yeah. shapes. Yeah. Um, these are things that I would not like ugh, deriving the moment of inertia of different shapes would take forever. We've got F equals MA. There's a potential energy in integral form. We've got work 
Yeah, you can, you can see that calculus is involved in this course <laughs> because it, they're all written in like integral form and whatever. Okay, cool. I think we're done with 802 final. Yay, yeah. we passed. High five. Show us what you, uh, what you should do. <laughs> okay. So this is the very first exam that I took in 8012, Physics for Masochists. <laughs> 2007, that fateful day. Okay, here's this problem. Number five out of 25 <laughs> points. I got one, one point. Okay, so I've got an eight out of 10 on the first problem, so that's good. Oh, I got the direction of friction wrong. How could I say that there was no <laughs> friction acting on the tire? Well, I wonder what I was thinking. Of course there's friction. Look, I, I think it's a common thing for people <laughs> to look back on their exams with the phrase, what was I thinking? <laughs> Circle the point where the magnitude of acceleration is the greatest. Well, I did pretty good there because of all the multiple choice ones, I got it right. What else have we got? Oh, I got these right too, yay. And then it goes downhill from here. <laughs> yeah, so you can see you did a lot of algebra, like you had to set up yeah. these equations and then manipulate them to cancel terms. And I think that's where people can go wrong because it's like you've got, you've barely got enough space to answer the question, first yeah, of all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, hey, look, F equals MA. What else have we got? Watch out the algebra is what somebody wrote when they were grading this. This problem, this is this is one that I actually remembered. The rest yeah. of these pff, gone from my memory, but this one I remember. What is the period of oscillation of the disk? I will never know because I, <laughs> I got a zero on it. Doesn't that. like stress make you remember situations more, which is why you remember this question Maybe because you were so. drawn the time. I actually did in the end pass this class. This is 8012, then 8022, I got an A. So I learned how to do MIT. So can we pause for just one second and talk about exam tips and tricks, like best practices? Because it's been a while since I've taken yeah. physics exams, but I do feel like I learned a lot of techniques. I didn't really look at practice problems much before I got to college. I just sort of thought I knew the material and I was ready to go. But as soon as I got to MIT and got to some harder material, one thing we would do that really helped was looking at old practice exams from previous years of the course. I almost exams? feel like that is the most useful way to study for an exam. Mm -hmm. Past exams are such a good way to, to study because they tell you the format of the problem. Like even if the problems aren't the same, they, they let you know how much time you've got, mm -hmm. how much time you should be allocating. You're not going to get better just by only reading solutions. You have to read them and then try yourself. And actually, I think a good thing to do is try until you get stuck. If you're really mm. stuck and you've explored the avenues, look at the solutions, but you don't need to look at the whole thing. Mm. You can just look at the first line that gets you off the hurdle you're on mm. and then keep going until you get to the next hurdle. And I think that's a good way to train yourself how to finish the problem. Another tip for like exam preparation, it's kind of related to looking at solutions um, in the same way, but it would be working in a group for at least a little bit of time yeah. while you're studying. I experienced nearly fa nearly failing a number of my courses freshman year. I came into MIT not prepared for the rigor of, of MIT. I didn't just almost fail this exam, I did fail a math exam. My very first math exam, I think I got like a 10% or something like well, that. I, I mentioned before we filmed, I got a minus five on a math exam <laughs> once. <laughs> they're, they're, that was impressive. I did, I did end up passing the course with an okay grade mm -hmm. as well. I ended up passing the class with a B. Yeah. So I retook that exam and I got a 90 something on the retake of the math exam. And it was just purely from learning how to study for the exams. And the biggest things were doing the practice problems. I, I mean, honestly, that was it. Do the practice problems. Because that helps you with everything else. It helps you yeah. with time management. Mm -hmm. with. So that's 8012. Thanks for looking at the exam with me. Glad to have done another MIT one. It brings back good memories. Good and bad. Don't be intimidated again. though, if you're watching this and you didn't understand the questions, you really need to be in the class. Definitely go over and check out Toby's channel. We, we did that uh, entrance exam to get into MIT in 1867. It was really cute. <laughs> we just looked at the geometry section, but um, I'll put a link in the description. So check out and subscribe to Toby's channel. Uh, do you know my, my sign off? Happy physicsing. Yes! <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and happy, happy physicsing. physicsing. <laughs> Thanks to KiwiCo for supporting PBS. KiwiCo delivers monthly hands-on kids projects featuring science, technology, engineering, art, or math. Every crate includes an educational magazine, project supplies, and detailed instructions written for kids. There are six different crates for different age ranges from zero to 16 plus. Plus, cause there's no age limit on curiosity. Go to kiwico.com slash physicsgirl or click the link in the description to learn more.